Hi, this is Tim with Cisco's Engineering Licensing Office. This is a quick run-through of the Cisco Smart Software Manager satellite GUI configuration. This is done after the instance has been spun up in a virtual machine and you're presented with the GUI to complete the configuration. After logging in the first time, you'll need to change your password uh, in order to obtain access. Once logged in, you'll be prompted with stages to complete the configuration. The first part of it is the network setup, and this includes validating your IP address information and also the NTP. NTP is very important for the synchronization when it happens, and if it fails, as it's done right here, you'll want to make sure to configure it with an NTP server that uh, is reachable. So by changing our IP address, We'll go ahead and ask this satellite to contact a different NTP server to set up our time with. After requesting another time sync, we can see that the GUI responds back, letting us know that the synchronization was complete. Next, let's configure our setup method. We could either choose to do this manually or an easier way, which is by using the network setup. The network setup will automatically access your smart account and will allow you to configure the satellite to synchronize with a particular virtual account. So remember that once the satellite is configured to access a virtual account, that means that the licensing authority, in other words, that ability to issue ID tokens, will be transferred from the smart software manager to the satellite. So the satellite, in turn, will be issuing the token IDs. We can choose to give it a satellite name and then indicate which smart account we'd like the satellite to attach to and more specifically into which virtual account. After clicking on register, it will go ahead and connect through the cloud to bind this satellite with the virtual account that we've just selected. What I like about the network setup is that it takes away all of those steps and kind of automates things for you so you don't have to go and copy a file from one side to the other and then get that response file and then copy it back to the satellite. The satellite will go ahead and take care of all of this for you and then when it's complete you'll get a message letting you know when it's done. During the initial configuration, the satellite will prompt you at certain points in time, for example, maybe where it needs to do a restart. You'll get a message on the screen that looks like this, letting you know that it's in the process of restarting, and once it's done, it'll return you to a prompt uh, to let you know that it's been completed. So at this point, our satellite is almost finished restarting, and there's a couple more steps we'll need to take in order to set the synchronization type. Uh, and then also we can view a summary before it's done. So here's our login prompt. We can go ahead and log into the satellite with our newly updated password, and then we can go ahead and finish the configuration. Choosing the network synchronization will ensure that your satellite syncs up every 30 days and doesn't require any type of manual intervention. So here's our satellite. It's been completely set up. We can see now we've got the ability to issue ID tokens. We can view any of the licenses that we have in this virtual account and also any product instances that have been connected. Again, the event log is helpful for keeping track of things that happen along the way. Now, Depending on the satellite you have and the products that you're registering, you might be required to wait a 48-hour period, and that's business days, before registering any new products with the satellite. Okay, so that is the express setup on the Cisco Smart Software Manager satellite.